I know there's a lot of athletes that because this is the only offer on the table, mm -hmm. my heart is really not in it to go to that school. But I want to, you know, have that all the lights on me for that one day in the gymnasium. And you know what? Uh, I if that recruit. That's the only offer I got. Man, I don't want to go to cold. You know, because my, you know, I had some friends. I mean, I, I know a couple of people that went up there and they said the school sunk. But there's this other coach that was like, hey, you know what? We're out of scholarship. But, you know, you got good grades. You're mm -hmm. in state. You know, we can get you on, you know, we can prefer you. We, you know, we can get you the 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 funding that you need in your family, the, the help that you need to get in this school. All you got to do is just be on the field and work your butt off. You know, you show us that. You deserve it. You might not get the fanfare. You might not get that national signing day photo op and all this type of stuff. But this is, but you know what? In my heart, this is where I really want to be. I really want to be here. You you take the walk on, man. You know, that, <laughs> that's, that's not a hard that, that's a hard sell though. You gotta tell deep down the kid's heart might be in it, but you know, or it could be the opposite. He has the opportunity to go to a good program, but it's not a national program. And he feels, man, you know what? If I go to this program, I'm not really gonna get a chance to go to the next level. I'm going to force fit into this walk on program just so I can say I, you know, played at a D1 school. And I, if he feel that he can make the squad, then, you know, he got to do that, you know. Um, but that that's where it comes. That's where it comes down. You know, um, what is your goal as far as being in the game? You know, what are your intentions? And then what is your love of the game? You know, so I, I always ask key is, you know, what does the final destination look like? And right. if they don't know. Then we sit down and we talk about what does the final destination look like? And right. then we work our way backwards. And then that's how we make the correct choice on, on where we're going to go. You know, uh, so I advise kids to do it. What does the final destination look like? You know, and then once you know that, then you know which route that you want to go to. You know, if, if you you've been in the coaching trenches and and i know that you can't impose your will on a lot of decisions that you made you know either that are influenced by family members but do you see a lot of those opportunities being passed up you know taking the route of you know i got good grades you know i live in florida i got florida bright futures so my tuition can be paid for. you can squeeze a little bit of money to stay in the dorms and stuff like that but i really want to play for this program but, you know, I don't get the fanfare that, um, you know, uh, you know, you got a you didn't get a scholarship, but you're walking on to, you know, Florida. Um, you know, there's not a lot of fanfare that comes with it. I mean, have you seen that those a lot of those opportunities being passed up because of factors? Oh, all the time, all the time. You know, you if you look at it this year, let's say if you got 100 kids going off to college to play football probably and and a, a good friend of mine he wrote his uh, his final master's uh degree uh essay on this or he almost turned it into a book and i believe if i'm correct he said that within one semester 60 percent of those kids were back home whether it was a walk-on or if if they were going to a school out of state you know, so out of 100 kids, only 40 of them, and I'm, I'm just throwing out 100, but only 40% of them are going to stay, you know, more than one semester. And then as time go on, that number goes down to 20%. So I think it was 10, only 10% 10 that they leave, only 10% come back with a degree or they stay out for years or, you know, they go to the league or whatever. So the yeah. numbers are, you know, if you out of out of a hundred, only ten are gonna come back with a degree or get to the next level. I think some coaches probably do their athletes a disservice and not put realistic expectations on 
the next level. Uh, the next level is the top 1% of 1% of the athletes that are even in college or whatever. You know, very few of those, was it 300 people get drafted, or was it 199 get drafted out of, you know, 900 some programs every year to go to the NFL? I mean, it's not realistic. Uh, and, and I think those, those pro professional aspiration decisions have a lasting effect on on you know because you know you you sign with you know with Alabama or or, or Texas with the expectation that you're going to get a chance at the next level and a lot of times it's not realistic and you end up going up there not liking the program and then come back home and you know then some people never recover from that and I and I'll admit there is a stigma, kind of, to me, with JUCO. I think certain players, you know, they might not want to admit it. You know, when 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 the when you have to take the JUCO route, it's like I don't really want to talk about it. You know, it's like you know, it's like you're going to I don't know boot camp or something like that. You know, it, and then you know, in two years, you're going to go back. You know, it's prep school. It's okay. What do you think about JUCO? Hey man, you know it, it, it's another avenue, and like I said, if you love the game, man, it, it don't matter where you gotta go to play the game and be a part of the game, you know. So uh, JUCO is, is a second chance, you know. So I didn't do something right the first time, and so now JUCO gives me a second opportunity. Or uh, I had a young young man; he went out to Nebraska D three school. He was out there for a whole year. He transferred from there to the JUCO in Miami. He did a whole year there, and then he got picked up by FAU, you know. But he he wasn't getting those phone calls and those texts, and he wasn't getting that love. So JUCO was actually his best friend because it gave the D1 school an opportunity to see him, you know. And so, you know, it, it just kind of all depends on, on the player and the situation they're in. But, I, I you know, I – it's, a, it's another opportunity.